In the winter of 2013, the UK was left battered by some of the worst storms on record. Just when you think things can't get any worse. Hardest hit were the Somerset levels that were left completely submerged under metres of water after the rivers burst their banks in early January. Everything was brand new. It's all been written off. The media flocked to the area to cover the stories of those left homeless. But now, months on from the initial storms, and as media interest in the levels has dwindled, we hear the thoughts and feelings from those still left to rebuild their houses and their lives. No, nothing's been normal for a long time here, and it's really hard, really hard. The press may have gone, but the water hasn't. This is the second wave. Keith Match, a resident of the levels and self-employed firewood merchant, has seen both his home and business destroyed by the flooding. Barely recovering from the floods of 2012, Keith, no longer able to work, is forced to yet again refurbish his home. I had the house reinstated after the last flood in the way I wanted it, which was great, but I only got to live in here for two months and it flooded again. Everything downstairs you see was brand new. Obviously the furniture has all been written off, so that's all been skipped. And the kitchen was brand new, I'd only been in three months and he had two months use of it and it's been ripped out again. Everything was brand new and it's all been written off. Uh, in Stokes and Gregory, where we are, um, the only route in is via one road and that flash floods sometimes so it has marooned us a couple of times uh, but it does cut us off from a lot of our customers. We obviously live on the Somerset level so we're used to flooding but certainly the last two years um, have been pretty horrific in the terms of the water, the amount of water, and how long it stays and cuts us off road-wise from, uh, from other people, our customers, really. If you're in this horrible situation where your house is full of stagnant water, which is sewage in, and your hope of getting insurance is probably very slim, you need to help these people now because the last two months have been very difficult, very hard for this community. And yes, in the future, of course, you need to look forward and help these people, but they need help now to get themselves back on their feet, get their houses sanitised, cleaned, uh, and to get back to a normal life because it's no, nothing's been normal for a long time here and it's really hard, really hard. We were warned as a family that there was a metre surge coming so get out and get out quick. Um, so I threw my mum and the kids and the dogs and a guinea pig at that stage in the car. At that point we still had eight chickens and two rabbits and a guinea pig left. Um, and you know somebody asked me this morning did I save the ride on tractor? I had a choice, I saved my animals or I saved the ride on tractor, so my animals came. Um, and the metre surge was because they didn't want Taunton affected, so they opened the gates and pumped another metre of water at us, and that's why our houses in Moreland got affected. Since the flooding, there has been a noticeable increase of media presence in the area. However, many have disputed as to whether this media attention is really a help or hindrance to their recovery. A lot of the media have been completely thoughtless about the needs of the locals to try and keep their jobs going. And so they've parked where lorries need to get in and out. And they've clogged up roads and they've just got in people's ways. And people are already very stressed. The last thing you want to do is irritate them more. So actually being a bit thoughtful about how you conduct yourself is a key part of this. But getting the message out is important too. Um, and generally we've got uh, quite a number of local people, farmers, publicans, uh, residents, all sorts of people who've been prepared to be interviewed, which is great, but the media have pretty much gone now. They were here for a while, but the problem is they've got, I think they've been gone for about two or three weeks now, and as you can see, just looking outside, the water's still here, and it will be here for a couple of months. But you can never gather the full impact unless you're here and actually see how much water there is around. It's okay seeing it on the TV, and I've spoken to people who have then come out of the lock and they think, wow, didn't realise it was that bad. The media coverage has affected my business negatively. I think it has scared people. Somerset Levels is an area in Somerset. It is not the whole of Somerset. We are, we are on the edge of the Somerset Levels. Um, 
Therefore, when you have rolling news, which is 24-7, if you're sat at home watching that, I think it, it makes people fearful, I think. Um, certainly there are no-go areas, but there's certainly a lot of Somerset that is very much open for business and is not affected. Though the flooding was devastating to many, the crisis has inspired an increase of community spirit amongst the locals, who have come together to help one another. I've come into contact with hundreds of people that are affected, um, well, it affects me as well, but um, yes, there's definitely a feeling that people are looking out for each other and looking after, um, so that could be the only good thing I think that has come out of this. There is a group on Facebook called FLAG, and they have been amazing and in fact they led the way of helping people and getting people help when a lot of the authorities were slow off the mark to do so but saying that now there is a lot of help now um, albeit it was a slow start but it's here now um, but yes it's certainly the worst I've seen um, in my lifetime community response has been amazing um, there wasn't you know the problem is that there wasn't anything in place none of the agencies police county councils realized what was going to happen or what did happen um, and nobody had set anything else up so again flag had to step up flag was set up as a lobbying group to dredge the rivers stop the flooding dredge the rivers that was our prime goal um, but really the, the whole point of FLAG was to have something done for our future, for our children, um, for the levels as a whole, um, because nobody else was really listening. So we set this up and this is where we've ended up at the moment, right in the middle of it. Um, and now the community is, you know, the, the whole of the nation, the whole of the UK. Um, you know, we've got two cars being sent down from Yorkshire to help people, you know, deliver stuff. Um, out to people who are affected, you know, that can't come to the distribution centre or, you know, for the guys on the ground to be able to liaise and get sandbags and get sand and transfer people around to help people, you know, the, the extent of it is enormous. It's not just hand washing bars of soap and tins of beans, it's, it's massive scale on a, on a massive level now. They've made sure that people have got food if they perhaps haven't got their normal income stream that they've got clothes if they had to leave really suddenly, that they've got bedding, that they've got all the sorts of things that you might not have when you suddenly move into rented property. Moral support is, means more than just about everything else. It's when the water goes, that's when you need the help of tidying it all back up because I've been doing it myself and I was just demoralised doing it, but I managed to get some help and it made a hell of a lot of difference and it will, again, when the water goes here from the fields, clear it all up if we can get hand doing that just get it back to how it was as quick as possible. That's the key to it all. Whether you want to blame it on climate change or whether you want to blame it on um, no dredging, um, something has to be done because it can't happen. These people's lives can't be ruined again. It's not fair. So um, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that it won't happen. Take the